Hi everyone and thank you for joining me with Linda Bone this morning. Good morning Linda. Good morning Adele. <laughs> Linda has just completed the six week intensive and we had our wind up call last week that, that just came up with so many amazing, amazing um, uh, affirmations of what you've been able to achieve in our time together. Now, we didn't have a straight six weeks. We kind of had a bit of a funny one. We had two weeks. Then you went off on a retreat, which was phenomenal for you to do. Then you came back. We had a couple more weekly sessions. And then the last two, we stretched out to fortnightly. So, and I did mention this to you before, we started working together on the 6th of June. And our last session was on the 8th of August. So we started on 6th of the 6th. And we wound it all up with the last session on the 8th of the 8th. And given how many universal signs you are manifesting for yourself, I'm just kind of going, that's just divine timing all over again. Yep, absolutely. It's pretty incredible, right? Yeah. I never didn't even notice that. I know. I, it was what I was sort of getting ready this morning and I was typing up the notes and I went, now get out. No. Um, now, Linda, you did have the opportunity to watch session one again. Oh, yes. Yes. So um, I'd like to hear your thoughts about what you were like, well, basically two months ago or six sessions ago. Oh, well, I was going to start by asking you who that was. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> when I watched that, uh, I, I just am blown away by, in two months, um, how much has changed. Mm. I'm going to say, and this is going to come out wrong, but with a lot less work than I thought. Yeah, so, oh, no, uh, sounds that, perfectly fine to me. But by, by that I mean, um, I guess my whole life I've been a psychiatrist, psychologist, I've tried every pill, potion, therapy, group, book, whatever, um, and nothing, nothing's changed. And, like, and I've put a lot, a lot of work into that those things hours and hours day after day year after year and it hasn't been that full on for the six weeks yet I've had dramatic changes really life-changing and look I've got to say that that you know what you just said it, it plays a really big part in it you did do a lot of work before you and I did the six-week intensive and we, we did have a, a couple of pretty cracker sessions one in particular which I'll talk about in a moment which was session four that was truly the, the, just like the turning point from black to white was just phenomenal. But you had put in the work beforehand. And we also talked about this, that opportunity that you had to go away for two weeks to the meditation retreat also um, played a very big part in your transition. Um, as we talked about, it was almost like those, those first two sessions were bringing things up for you to sort of resolve um, because there were issues, you know, with your parents and with your son and going away on that retreat, you were able to do an awful lot of work there um, yeah. that really helped the process along. But I've got to say, again, it was session four that was the absolute turning point. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm, for anyone watching, I'm, I'm going to read out the first session of the, of the um, six-week intensive is asking you what you want to achieve. Now, I'm just going to read those out. Okay. <laughs> to be more in tune with your tuition, intuition and learn to listen, to attract meaningful relationships with like-minded people. You wanted clearer thinking because you questioned everything you think. I'm giggling because I know that this is like, who? What? <laughs> um, not knowing what you really wanted. Uh, you wanted to be able to make a decision without procrastination and fear. Again, I'm going... Who? Um, you wanted balance in your life and you wanted to engage more in your life. Um, you wanted to start sort of talking about a, a physical move, so a relocation with a fresh start. Fit and healthy, emotionally, spiritually and physically. And you wanted to stop people pleasing and be true to yourself. I'm, that's like, yes, yep, 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 yep. Done, done, done. Yep, kicked all the boxes. It's now you look at that list and you kind of go, "That's that's some pretty intense stuff mm. there." Oh yeah. But what we what what I and again I was going through the notes this morning before coming on here and 
the session four, which was the real cracker, uh, was we actually identified two key issues that you had around control. Um, and we realised, I mean, I think you had realised for a long time that you had this sort of tight grip on control and it wasn't really serving you well. It just made you quite angry. Um, yeah. What we were able to identify there was the two sides of the control. One of them was um, a, a, a leak between control and boredom where there was a lack of will or procrastination. And the other, which is the big one, was the, the link between control and anger. And that session, we, we went for two and a half hours. I think that's one that's going to go down in books as being truly a phenomenal space of time where we really got in there and yeah. pulled things apart. Um, and what came out of that um, was actually sort of the process that you went through for control and anger. But then also, um, and th this is the part that was also really great, was the definition of because you continually felt you had to prove yourself. So it was that driving force. The definition between what actually needs proof, being something tangible or fact-driven, yeah. and what doesn't need to be proven, which is intangible, which is um, your beliefs, your reactions and your emotions. Yeah. And that, I've got to say, that part there is what turned things around. Yeah. Because I actually remember... The thing is, I remember the feeling in that call when I went, I don't have to prove myself. Yeah. I remember, like, just having this feeling, and I still feel that feeling was like a miracle's just happened. <laughs> That's how it felt. Like, what didn't I get? I realise now I don't have to prove myself to any... But I, I just remember saying it like that and that feeling that came up. Yeah. And that was definitely a turning point. And this was all driven, and I'm sure you don't mind my saying this, but this was all driven by your upbringing and your relationship with your parents and your father in particular, of always needing to prove certain things. Um, and that was a, a habitual, a habitual behaviour that you just basically carried right through your life. Yeah, um, and, and again, it's like I still sit here shaking my head going, I get that you had the turning point, and I'm like, I sit here going, how on earth did it happen so incredibly fast and it become so incredibly effective for you? Because basically from that point on... Things changed. You were a different person altogether. Yeah. Uh, from that moment, just everything changed. Everything, yeah. my whole life just changed. Yeah. It's just like I went into this whole new person overnight, like over a call. And it's, it's interesting because, you know, people might hear that and go, oh, yeah, okay, so it's just, you know, realising you don't have to prove yourself. But it's all the work that happened underneath that. It's yeah. picking out all the crap that tied you to the idea that you had to prove yourself. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's like um, when that was removed, all the other stuff that I'd learnt and read and whatever over the years, it allowed that to come up and go, well, actually, I can do this stuff. I can do, like, I know it all, but I was just never able to do it. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly those moments did we have in our time, like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lots of them. Lots, Lots of them. But for me, the interesting thing is it's almost like I stepped away from our call that day and I was a different person from that, from that moment on. Like, it wasn't... Like I go away and think, oh, you know, now I might do this. It was just in, like it's an ingrained thing. It was gone. Yeah. What was there before was just gone. gone. And it was there was something about the identifying, really it was identifying what exactly what it was that was holding you back and being able to pull that apart Yeah. Um, and, and really make sense of what's this and what's that. Yeah. Um, so there were no cross wires. There was, you know, yeah, it was just that absolute clarity that came through that was honestly one of the most phenomenal things that I've ever been a part of. Truly, truly. I think it was for me too. <laughs> but I think, um, I think, like, I knew what I was doing. I knew my behaviour. I was very aware of how I functioned. But nothing seemed to work to help me change that until that call. <laughs> So, and, and I was going to ask you this, what do you, 
Why do you what do you think made our work together different to what you've done in the past? Look, I think all the things in the past have been about, you know, me becoming aware of my behaviours and what I do when and why, which, you know, every person I've ever seen, I've got it. I get it. I know it. I can admit it. But there was never... It was always like some sort of strategy to try and put in place to change this behaviour, but it didn't work because it didn't... Like, they were just strategies. Like, if I do A, B and C, I'll get through... But it was it was hard work all the time. It wasn't a natural a natural thing that I that became part of me. It was like, okay, stop, Linda, this has happened, this is what you need to do, step one. It was So it wasn't just a normal uh, thing. And I think it never really, all those things never really got to the bottom of was what was keeping me stuck. That was the thing. It was like I knew the things I was doing, but it never addressed what was keeping me there. Yeah. And, and that's a great segue because it's it kind of, what we came to as your progression through certain issues was um, you would, <laughs> I'm giggling again. I'm sorry, Linda. That's all right. This, this recognition, it's not going the way I want. You know why I'm giggling? Because I'm remembering all the times that you told me about interactions that you've had with people where you would just lose your shit completely. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> was me. That's like, and I'm giggling at that because I'm like, I'm, I'm remembering, it was like a, pantomime watching you go and they said rah, 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 rah. so that's why i'm giggling but what we identified was that that your brain would go this is not going the way i want it to which switched you into a desire for control not just a desire an absolute need for control yeah which then triggered a withdrawal of affection yeah now that part was astounding like yeah, that as soon as you hit that <coughs> bless yeah. you um, you withdrew all of your affection, not your emotion, but your affection. Yeah. Which is a pretty big difference. Then you would react to anger, and that was your response to a then withdraw even more and just yeah. go in for the kill. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> I'm sitting here looking at you now going, I can't use those words to describe you. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. And our, our last couple of weeks after that was really reiterating and reaffirming all of the things that you've been able to achieve. So I'm going to go through those now, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in session five, we we identified you're, you're actually now honouring what you need. That's huge. Absolutely. Absolutely huge. Um, you don't feel the need to justify or prove yourself anymore. Again, like that's a mountaintop kind of thing, mm. kind of achievement. Um, you, and what I identified there was that you had actually transitioned from a defeatist attitude to actually enjoying your life and trusting the journey. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's just, it's just been amazing. And I just, as you were saying that, I was just thinking, it's almost like I was never that person. It's not even, it's, it's just like, like I'll do things and go, oh, you know, like at work if I'm not, you know, like I would just speak my mind. I don't justify. Whereas before, I oh, no, sorry, I can't do that because blah, blah, blah. now it's just like, sorry, I can't do that. Yeah. And I feel okay with it. And, you know, I do, and then think afterwards, oh, oh, that's pretty natural. So and like that's accept that. the thing that's interesting here is that that's actually accepted by people, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you, it's quite interesting because I've noticed how people are treating me different. Um, Is that nice? Like I went into work um, this week <clears throat> and probably at least a dozen people said to me, oh, your hair looks great today. You had it cut and coloured a year three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but people are seeing me different. Wow. Oh, I like it. <laughs> wow. Yep. That's amazing, right? Yep, absolutely. I said to one lady, I tr trust me, it wasn't done. Look at the greys be gone. And it's <laughs> like, but no one noticed three weeks ago, but this week. It's in, so in, again, you know, we, we have this, because you've continued on this and we spoke in the wind up call last week that each each week that we've spoken, you've, you've actually embodied the changes even more. 
Um, and, and I think what I said in the wind-up call, you feel much more at home in this new space that you found. Like the first few weeks, it was like, what? Huh? What? But now it's just, as I said, you just feel much more at home in this much calmer space that you found for yourself. And I think um, what you said there is very interesting because I was actually thinking that the other day. It was I never felt comfortable in my own body, my own skin. I just felt like if every way I reacted wasn't really me, if yeah. that makes sense. Like it's not, it doesn't reflect who, who I am and what I think inside. But now I, f I feel like I'm quite happy with me. I do find it hard to contain my excitement when when something like that comes out of your mouth. It's just like, <laughs> yay! Um, and on that, <coughs> some of the things that we identified um, in the final session that truly are just like heart-stopping moments, truly. Um, you're putting discernment into practice. And this goes back to, you know, session one where you sort of like, you want to be able to make a decision without pr procrastination and fear. And you're actually putting discernment in practice and it's becoming second nature. You're not questioning. You're kind of going, there's this and there's this. That's going to work better. Without questioning yourself, without... Yeah. Like, really? What happened? <laughs> but it's great. I saw Adele. <laughs> I've got to stop saying that. Um, this this is a this was a kicker for me in the final session you said i feel more in control knowing that control was an issue for you all along yeah. and we kind of went on to say yeah you feel more in control rather than fighting for control yes which is yeah. again huge you you're you're in control of you you're, yeah. you're and, and i think and, and i think for me it may I've realised in this last couple of weeks, the control, what, the fighting for control was about controlling everything and everybody else to my way. Yeah. Whereas I don't need to do that. I'm only responsible for, for me and my behaviour. And if I'm comfortable with what I do, that's all, I, that's all I'm responsible for. Yeah. And so that's the difference now. And so I can control what's in my life. Like there's some things I can't control, but I choose the things I can control I'll work on and the things I can't I'll deal with the best way I can. You say that, I'm going to say, you say that so casually, but it is, again, one of those mountaintop, holy grail type of things. You see memes about this all the time. The only thing you control, you can control, is your reactions. The only thing you can control is your behaviours. And you're talking about it as, like, so casually. Like, of course that's... that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. What are you talking about? Like, that's so simple. That's something I still struggle with. Shh, don't tell anyone. No, I won't. <laughs> and you're speaking about it like it's the most, like it's second nature to you. Not even, it, it is your nature. And yeah. again, that is just something to be applauded because that is an achievement, just an astounding achievement, again. Um, it, what, <laughs> you've also stopped projecting, um, you, you've stopped doing the future projection of what if. Yeah. Again, massive. What, do you, what if? Who cares what if? You, like I, I, I think I told you I, I get up in the morning now and I say, okay, universe, do with me what you want and let everything happen in your time, not mine, and in your way, not mine, because clearly you make better decisions. <laughs> just give me the patience. Just give me the patience to hang in there. Yeah, and, and that's... Um, I, I'm actually... Actually, the universe is taking care of it and they're doing a much better job than me. And you're just, to, I've written it down, it's like the ultimate surrender yeah. with acceptance and with, with joy and with love and with no expectation except that it's going to be the best thing for you. And again, this is one of those things that people strive for and you're talking about it like it's just, <laughs> yeah, so? That's what you do. <laughs> Again, incredible. Um, I think that the real uh, whole 
body goosebump moment for me was in session six when I, I realised that through all of this, you have managed to reach a space of true self-love. Like yeah. the, the epitome of true self-love, self-respect, self-appreciation. It is true self-love. Some of the things that you've told me that you've been able to do in situations where six weeks ago you would, you would lose your shit and worry about things for days on end and you, you now look at these types of situations, again, with discernment and you just go, well, there's this, there's this, there's this. Well, that's the right one for me. I'm just going to go that way. Yeah, absolutely. And, and whereas before I would, you, like I, I, I could spend days, mm. Mm, well, what if, what if, what if, and still not make a decision. And I think I said to you a couple of weeks ago, there was, you know, like I'd have my days off and I'd have a list, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, and I don't want to do it, what if this, and I'd procrastinate, and then by the end of the day, the list was the same with a couple added things, and then the next day we go the same process, and then one day I got up and I had this list, and I went bang, 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 and it was like 11.30 or something. So what do I do with the rest of my day? <laughs> you enjoy your life the way you have been. Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely incredible, Linda. I... I've said it to you countless times. I've said it today in this interview countless times. The transition that, that you've undergone is... So I'm still shaking my head. I'm just going... I, it's just... Honestly, it's one for the books. Yeah. The yeah. absolute turnaround and the way that you genuinely enjoy your life now. Yeah. I think, look... I, I, as we're talking, it kind of seems like, I feel like this seems kind of just like, oh, yeah, you know. Oh, but the impact, like, it, and obviously because you've worked with me, but people who didn't know me six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, would have no idea how big this is. Mm -hmm. Like, the, just the impact. I love going to work again. I'm going to increase my days. Um, where I was trying to, I, I resigned from my job three times in less than a month. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, prior to this, like just not long before um, we started working together, like just random things, you know, like it's it's just been, um, you know, it was always about self-conscious, blah, blah, and I'm going to just might like to add, I'm going to start Latin dance class next week. Oh, my um, God, go you! And, I've, and I'm going to, I've, I'm um, in the process of joining um, a hiking group. Um, wow. Yeah, like it's it's just like I was really isolated, stayed at home. The world was too hard. Just get up, put one foot in front of the other, do what I have to do. That was it. And now it's like hell no, I've got a life to live. Let's get out there. Are you still with me? <laughs> <laughs> but I think like it, it's hard for other people to get the extent of its impact. And, you know, it's hard for me to understand the, the extent of the impact because every time you tell me something, I'm just like, that's, wow. And, and another thing is, like, even the fact that this has happened and it's been so quick and in the past, now it's been the next week analysing that. How did that happen? Where did it come from? Did, did, did. And now it's like I actually don't really care. Yeah. But I'm really, I really like this. So it's just like that in it again. It like that's how I would have gone. It was, it's just bizarre. I can't explain it. It. You know what? I, I just. You you you've kind of hit that point that most people um, are chasing or wanting in life, and that is the simple and the complex idea of you're happy. Yeah. And I think I said to you, um, you know, very early on, I had resigned myself to the fact that I was just going to be like this forever. And that's the way it was. I'd tried everything. I'd done everything. And this was just me. And that's how it was just going to be. And I would just have to suck it up and get through life like that. Yeah. But feeling like I feel now, it's like, holy shit, I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> I never thought I would have that opportunity in my life to feel so comfortable and at peace. That I, like I do now. Wow. 
that's going to be the heading of this video. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. And that's what, that's what it is. I feel, I'm at peace. That's amazing, Linda. Despite everything that's happened in my life the last few years, it, yeah. like, I'm just at peace with all of it. I told you they'd do a better job than me. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Linda, I am just... Honestly, I, I am just beyond any emotion that I can name that, that you actually chose to do this work with me. I, I really am. And, and we had had contact in the past and um, I reached out to you when I decided to do the six-week intensive and, and you jumped on it because it was divine timing again. Yeah. And being able to be and I'm going to say the final piece of the puzzle in everything that you've done yeah. is, is more than an honour for me. Seeing the results that you have had, you're like the poster child for what life is supposed to be about. Which yeah, it, feels, it feels nice. Phenomenal. <laughs> I, I just got to say too, like, I'm so grateful for the opportunity. I really am grateful that I got this opportunity. Um, and that you did this six week thing and the retreat fell in on the same time and like it was just divine timing. And I ju I'm so grateful um, and I'll never forget you in my whole life. Like I just, you were the turning point for me. You were what I needed at the right time, obviously. Um, and it's just, I just, it's like I could just be myself. You knew where to, where to dig, how to dig. Um, but it, it's just oh, been... It but you took it really well. Oh, but you know what? I was always, I, I never had a problem with admitting my shortcomings or whatever you want to call them. Or yeah. I knew it, but it was just for God's sake, someone tell me how to fix it. Like mm. what's causing this? And so, you know, just your perseverance in even like the two and a half hour calls and not giving up and while you're on a, on a roll with me and stuff like that. Look, I'll be forever grateful. I can't thank you enough. I really can't. Absolutely. My, my pleasure, like you would not believe because Linda, this, this is why I do this work. Yeah. This, this, is, this is exactly why I do this work because you deserve the chance to live a happy life. Yeah. And if I've been a part of helping you achieve that, then I'm, I'm living my dream. Oh, thank you. I just walk around now like I haven't got a problem in the world when I don't actually. No, you don't. You don't. I think I, I, you know what, dare I say it, I think I need to take some lessons from you now. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Thank you for um, agreeing to work with me and thank you for undergoing one of the most phenomenal transformations I have ever witnessed in such an incredibly short period of time. You are an amazing woman and, and I know that your life is now just going to go strength to strength. How can it not? Yeah, beautiful. Thank you again, Adele. I can't thank you enough. My absolute you, know, you may watch this video, you get the opportunity and you feel the time is right, go for it. Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> Thanks. See ya. So much. No worries. Bye.